Welcome to our lecture online. Sometimes we have to find the derivative by using te a technique called implicit differentiation. This is usually done when you're not able to solve for y in terms of x in our equation. Notice y appears here and it appears again as an argument inside the natural log function. So trying to isolate y would be difficult to then find dy dx explicitly. So that's why we call that implicit differentiation. Somehow, by taking the derivative of both sides in terms, by, uh, in terms of x, or with respect to x, I should say, then we're going to find some dy dx's in there, and then we have to isolate those and solve for them. Let me show you how. So what we're going to do here is take the derivative with respect to x of both sides of the equation. So we can say that the d dx of the left side, which would be y plus the natural log of xy is equal to the ddx of the right side, in this case, which is simply equal to 1. And of course, the derivative of the right side clearly is going to go to 0. But let's see what we end up with. When we take the derivative of the left side, well, we have dy dx plus the derivative of the natural log of x times y using the the uh, principle that we have, we go 1 over x times y times the derivative, and let me write it out, the d dx of x times y. And that equals 0 on the right side. So now we need to find the derivative respect x of that product x times y. So there we're going to use the product rule. So we end up with dy dx plus 1 over x times y times we take the first, which is x, times the derivative of the second with respect to x, which is dy dx. Plus the second, which is y, times the derivative of the first with respect to x, dx dx, which is simply equal to 1. And that is equal to 0. So now notice we have two places, here and there, where dy dx appears. We now have to isolate that and move everything else over to the other side. So first, what we need to do is multiply this times this to get rid of the brackets. So we have dy dx plus 1 over xy times x dy. So the x's cancel out, so we end up with 1 over y times dy dx. Plus, and here the y's will cancel out, so we end up with 1 over x, and that is equal to 0. So what I've done here is I multiplied 1 over xy times these two terms. In this case, the x's cancel out. We have 1 over y. In this case, the y's cancel out. We end up with 1 over x. But here, of course, we also have a dy dx. So the next thing what I want to do is move the 1 over x to the right side and on the left side factor out the dy dx. So let's do that next. So let's come over here. And so on the left side, we end up with a dy dx is equal to, oh, no, not equal to, I'm getting ahead of myself. So let's get rid of that equal sign. So here we have times. When we factor out the dy dx from these two terms, we end up with a 1 plus 1 over y. 1 plus 1 over y. And that is equal to, because now we take the 1 over x and move to the right side, becomes minus 1 over x. Okay, here I think I want to write that over a common denominator. So let's do that. So we end up with dy dx times, here we have y plus 1 over y is equal to minus 1 over x. And now we can move this to the right side by doing cross multiplication, which means that here we have dy dx is equal to minus y in the numerator, since that goes over there, divided by x times y plus 1 in the denominator, and that then gives us a nice uh, equation for dy dx. However, notice that dy dx is in terms of y and x. We could change that by going back over here and see, let's see, can I do that? y, y, let's see, 1 over y, nope, I think, I think I'm stuck with leaving it in that form, so let's go ahead and do that. There's the final form of that. What I was hoping to do is replace the y by some function of x, but that would be hard to do based upon what we have here, and change this into a function of x again. That would be too difficult to do, so we'll just leave it like that.
There's our answer. And that's how it's done.